Well, I'm back in my own kitchen, ready to tackle the turkey for our Food Network dinner tonight. So what do we really know about turkey? Well, it's got a lot of mass, but not a lot of flavor. It's got a hole in the middle, and it can go from undercooked to desert dry in the wink of an eye. Luckily, we can change the nature of this bird with a little help from our friends salt and sugar, or in this case, honey. Of course, you know this means brine. I know, you've seen me do the brine thing before, but this time is a little different, okay? Because we're gonna smoke this bird, and that means a much longer exposure to heat, and that means we're even in more danger of drying the meat out, okay? So we really do need the insurance of a brine. But smoke also means flavor, but it's, it's a very kind of single line flavor, and it tastes much better if it's got some contrasting flavors mixed into it. And that's why we're gonna use some vegetable broth in our brine, and that also explains the honey. But first, we need a vessel. I used to do my brining in a five gallon bucket. That is until I found this sweet construction cooler. Not only is it insulated, it's got a handy spigot for brine release. And it's just the right size for my kind of bird. Now, bring a gallon of water to a boil. Excellent. Now weigh out one pound of kosher salt, that's about two cups, and one pound of honey. That's about one and a third cups. Since this brine contains salt and ice, and since it's in a cooler, I don't see any problem with just stashing it in a cool place like my porch. How long? Well, ideally a 16 pounder like this would sit for 12 hours, but as few as four hours will make a big difference. Depending on your turkey's exact weight and size, it could be on the grill for as many as four, even five hours. So it's important that you have enough fuel on hand. Now, I admit, I really love the flavor of charcoal, but when it comes to holiday cooking, I dearly love the convenience of liquid propane. So crank your grill up as high as it needs to hit 400 degrees. And uh, take out one of the food grates, as I have here, if you can, because that'll give you direct access to the heat bars, and uh, that's a good thing. Why? Because when the time comes, we're gonna drop some smoke bombs. We've got three of them here, which we will drop in one hour intervals. It's just a double layer of aluminum foil. Just got a handful of hardwood chips and some uh, herbs and spices. A little uh, rosemary down at the bottom. You can see here's some, uh, some cumin seed down there. We've got uh, some cinnamon cloves, just to keep things interesting. And, and I've got a star anise tucked away in here. There it is. Now, as far as hardware goes, be ready with an instant read thermometer, uh, some waterproof and heatproof oven mitts, a big long set of tongs, a uh, spritzer bottle in case we have any little flare ups, and uh, just in case we have you know, bigger flare ups. Never light the grill without one. My last piece of hardware is a little bit unorthodox. Oh, I know, it looks like a foil roasting pan, but it's actually a heat shield. Observe. That's right, it's a heat shield. We're ready. We're just looking for a coating here, not a slathering, so a couple of teaspoons will do. Our grill is hot, so our heat shield goes down, followed by the bird. Now I know it seems like we got a lot of metal going in here, but believe it, it's going to help to slow down the browning of the parts that usually brown the fastest, and that's gonna mean more even cooking. Now we're gonna start with the bird shifted over to the right, which means that our smoke bomb goes down right on that end. But after an hour, you're gonna want to take out the old smoke bomb, We'll shift the grate over to this side so that we can get some smoke exposure over here. In that case, we'll just put the new one there and turn the heat down 
to low. We want to maintain about 350 degrees in there at all times. If you don't actually have a, a thermometer built onto your grill, you'll want to put one on the inside. Remember, the turkey never sits over direct heat. It's always indirect heat. The wood goes over the heat, the turkey doesn't, okay? Now, uh, the only thing you've really got to do at this point is watch for the smoke that's going to start wisping out of the sides of the grill. As long as it's light and relatively light in color, you're okay. Well, our honey brine turkey has been in the smoke for a little over four hours. Its internal temperature is now 150 degrees. This bird is ready to exit the grill. Of course, this doesn't mean that our turkey's actually finished cooking because it isn't. See, there's enough residual heat still locked inside that guy for the heat to elevate another 10, maybe even 15 degrees over the next half hour. So you just wrap them up in a nice double layer of foil and let them keep cooking. 